Hey guys and welcome back to part 9 of the This Monologue series. I'd like to thank you guys for your patience over the last few weeks. I know this series has been on a little bit of a hiatus, but I hope going forward we will be back to our regular uploading schedule. So if you can remember that far back, we were able to defeat Misty in the last episode, and as promised, that means we are going to open this week's episode with an evolution. So we are going to put the Moonstone onto Prince here, and it's time for him to ascend to the rank of King. Okay, and there we go, we have ourselves a Nido King, and this guy is going to be a powerhouse for us. Certainly in the short term, and hopefully for the rest of the game. Out of all the Pokemon here, I've always said that Nido King was going to be one of the six I definitely hold on to if we are able to progress through the whole game under the Nuzlocke rules. So, we are going to head out of Cerulean City, we're done here, so we are going to head into this house which has opened up to us, and as you can see there has been a burglary, and here is the man responsible. So, this guy here is actually going to be a bit of a threat to us. His second Pokemon is a Drowsy, which is a Psychic type Pokemon, which is a real danger to the Poison type Pokemon we have in our team. Psychic type is probably the most powerful type on Pokemon Red and Pokemon Blue, and really does pose a threat to us, and it does no confusion, so it does have the Psychic type moves. That crit did a lot, so I opened up with a Poison Powder because I thought the continual damage would be better, so the Absorb will take us back up, so we can definitely live another definitely live another couple of Karate Chops. So we'll do one more Absorb and I think we're probably going to have to switch out because that Absorb's not doing enough damage. So okay, so we're going to switch out for sure. I'm going to put Dino Plant in I think first because I want to hold Prince back a little bit. He is our most powerful Pokemon now but I am worried about that Drowsy so I want to keep him at full health just in case we need him for the Drowsy. So. I'm hoping a Vine Whip will actually end this with the Poison Damage as well. And it does, cool. So that's one down, and that will bring out the Drowsy. Here we go. So I'm going to set up a Leech Seed for the Chip Damage, because I know this thing knows Confusion. Let's see how much this does. Okay, so it does about half. It does about half health, which the Leech Seed will take back above. So I'm going to hit it with a Vine Whip. Like so, not a lot of damage. Okay, Disable's not too bad. That gives us three turns, so we get a little bit more health back from Leech Seed, and then we can hit it with a Tackle. So anything but a Confusion here would be very good for us. Disable, that's fine. And we get a little bit more health back, so as long as... Okay, that's down. Yeah, so it only used one Confusion, so that was really useful to us, because obviously it did about half health, so a couple of Confusions could have beaten our Ivy Soul, which would have been a nightmare under the Nuzlocke rules we're playing. So we get the TM for Dig, which annoyingly our Nido King doesn't learn, because that would have been a hugely powerful move, because it would have got the same type of attack bonus for its new ground type, which it gains on evolution. So we've got a lot of battles coming up on our trip down to the Million Cities, so I am going to heal up quickly. Okay, and we're all healed up. So, as I was saying before, I am hoping to get back to a regular upload schedule going forward because things have died down a little bit now. I was able to get a video up yesterday which shows you how to get a Mew in Pokemon Red or Pokemon Blue, whichever game you're playing, before Misty's Gym. If you want to see that video, I'll put a card up in the top right, and I do use this save file to do it off of, so you may you may recognise some of the Pokemon in the video, but yeah, have a click and let me know if you enjoy it. So we are able to catch this Pokemon because Route 5 is a new route. Oddish was the only Pokemon we could have captured, the other Pokemon were Pidgey and Mankey. We obviously already have Radish, but because there is a limited pool of Pokemon we can choose from, I am going to try and capture this Pokemon. I'm going to use Nightwing here because he tanks the grass type moves pretty well and the leech seed means this Oddish won't be able to hurt him so I'm just going to try and chip it down using the leech life and we should be pretty easy to get it down to a health where we can capture it really easily so 
Okay, I think it can live another leech life, so we'll do one more leech life and then we'll start throwing pokeballs at it. That's perfect. So, it's really low, really low health obviously. We have some pokeballs, so we should be able to add this. I think... I mean, having backup Pokemon is never a bad thing in these kind of runs, because even though we haven't lost any Pokemon yet, I'm sure once we get further into the game we will do, and having the extra Pokemon will be useful to us. So, we have to give Oddish a nickname. I've used my normal Oddish nickname, so... Okay, so we'll call this Oddish Petal. Petal is going to be our backup Oddish, just in case anything happens to Radish. Hopefully it won't, but it never hurts to be careful. So, we're just going past the daycare centre there on the right, on the left of the screen, sorry, and into the underground park. So that girl there will offer you a Nidoran trade. And as you can see, one of the best things about the Underground Park in this game is the hidden items. There's two hidden items, the full store you just saw, and an X special which should be around about here. Time that really well. So, full store at this stage of the game is really, really, really useful. You really want to hold on to that until much later in the game because they do become useful around the time of the later gens and the Elite Four. It's probably a waste to use that at this stage of the game because you can get away with just regular potions. So I moved Prince to the front because we haven't actually used him yet as an Edo King and I really want to see just how good he's going to be. Like I said, he's still not got that powerful stab move yet, which Dig would have been really useful for, but for some reason he can't learn it in this game. So we're going to have to make do a corner attack, so that's... I don't know if the crit mattered there. I'd like to think it would have beaten it anyway, but... Yeah, I mean you can tell you can tell Prince is more powerful than what else we've got, just from the health he has. He's up in the 70s already, whereas the rest of our Pokemon are in their 40s, so... He's going to be really powerful for the next, for the next few gyms in particular. He's going to resist Lieutenant Surge's Electric-type Pokemon. So he's going to be a really handy one to have around, and he hits really, really hard at this stage of the game. So that's the bug catcher down, and then we are going to keep Prince in front for the next battle. Just because, again, he's our most powerful Pokemon, and then I'm probably going to move Radish back up, because he's still a few levels back from Ivysaur and from Nidoking. So... I'm not, I still haven't decided if I'm going to use Golbat, uh, Zubat as he is now. Part of me thinks maybe I should because there's no guarantee I'm going to catch better Pokemon, at least in the short term, but at the same time, if I was picking out a team now, Golbat wouldn't be in that team, so I haven't made that decision. He's not too far behind, so if I did want to catch him up, it wouldn't take too long to do off screen. But let me know. Let me know down in the comments what you think. Should I use Should I use uh, Nightwing in my team for now, or should I hold out, train the three main Pokemon I'm training, which is Radish, Dino Plant, and Prince, and just train those, and then try and bring more powerful Pokemon later on in the game into the team. Let me know what you think, and if enough of you guys think I should train him up, then I will train Nightwing up. So again, we've got a really good type matchup here. Squirtle seems to be only using water type moves, which can't really damage, ra damage Radish. So the absorbs are absorbing all the health back. So that's all good on our end. So one more absorb should do it. And that is the Squirtle down. Radish should get a lot of experience from that battle. And it does grow to level 18, so that is, that's excellent. Radish growing the levels, he won't evolve for another few levels, I think it's level 22. He will evolve into a Gloom, but he's doing he's doing okay, he's still got a very shallow move pool. He only knows Absorb is a damaging move, but I like Radish, I think I think we've got a good team building here. So we weren't able to find the Oddish on Route 6. It was the same Pokemon as on Route 5, so you could find Pidgey, Mankey or Oddish. I'm not too worried because we do already have two Oddish, so I'm not too disappointed on that. We'll just kill the Pidgey to get the experience. So we Dino Punk goes to level 22, which is excellent, and wants to learn Poison Powder, so I will teach him Poison Powder. And we'll just get rid of Growl. I don't really use Growl, so 
poison powder can be useful because again you get that consistent chip damage. So I'm going to avoid the train on the right because his butterfree knows confusion, and we're just gonna we're just gonna avoid him for now. So we have two more trainers we're going to beat in this episode. I think we're still leading with Dino Plant here. Okay, so I believe this girl has three Pidgeys. I might be wrong, but from memory she has three Pidgeys, so this should be fairly easy for Dino Plant because the Gusts are still normal type in this generation, so the Pidgey shouldn't hit too hard. Okay, so it's a three hit KO, so we will just keep tackling away because the Vine Whip won't do as much damage because the Pidgeys resist it. So we'll just keep chipping away with the tackles. Critical hit, very, very useful. So what we're going to do once we do get into Vermilion City is there is a lot to do there. So there is the SS Han, obviously, where we are able to get cuts and we are able to have our fourth, I believe, battle with our rival, which should be a good episode. Uh, so that will probably be the next episode is on SSM and then after that we have got the gym with Lieutenant Surge so the electric type gym once we've got cut we can access that which has the most annoying gym puzzle in the Pokemon series so we've got that to look forward to but our team should be really well set up I mean we've got Radish and Dino Plant who resist electric attacks uh, sorry, at least not very electric. Electric attacks are not very effective against the grass types, and then we have Prince here who will resist them entirely because of his ground typing. So we should be really, really well set up to deal with that, to deal with the Sentinel Surge's gem. So that should be a really easy one. And once we've done that, we will be heading through Rock Tunnel, which everyone's looking forward to, I'm sure. So. But before all that, in this episode, we have got one more thing to do when we get to the Million City, and that is to grab ourselves a bike voucher from the Pokemon Fan Club. So we will. Prince is going to level 23, which is good, and he wants to learn Thrash, okay. So Thrash is an interesting move because it's powerful, but it does confuse you at the end. So it's a risk reward kind of move. I've got rid of Tackle for it because the extra damage can be helpful. And we already have Horn Attack on Prince, which does a similar sort of job to Sackle, but is better. So, as I said, we are in the Minion City, and we are going to head straight to the Pokemon Fan Club and get ourselves a bike voucher. All you have to do is speak to the President here, and he will tell you all about his Rapidash and how great it is, and he'll give you a bike voucher for listening. To cash the bike voucher in, you have to go back to Cerulean City, to the bike shop, and hand it over. So I'm not going to do that on screen, I'm going to go and get that off screen. Because I don't want you guys to have to watch me go all the way back to Cerulean City just to get a bicycle and come back. So when we renew, resume for the next episode, it will be back here in Vermilion City, and we will be heading to the SSN. So all that's left to do is to head back to the Pokemon Center and heal our team up, our new full six Pokemon team now that we have Petal and say thank you guys for watching. Again thank you for your patience during the hiatus on this series. I expect another episode to go up this weekend and then we should hopefully be back two to a week after that. See you in the next one guys, thanks for watching.